This afternoon, I want to share with you guys just some, again, the different philosophies in regards to the pick and roll. We're going to talk about defending the middle pick and roll and then talk a little bit about defending the side pick and roll. I know the, I spoke on it this morning, the game of basketball, especially in the NBA level, has really changed since when I played. I mean, we had great guards back then as well. We had Isaiah and Kevin Johnson and Tim Hardaway. But our offensive philosophy then, and a lot of the coaches back then, it wasn't to attack defenses with pick and roll. We had great inside presence, great inside players, post-up players. So we really got away from a lot of pick and rolls. We didn't run in as many pick and rolls as today's offenses. Today's got pick and roll may be the number one offense in the NBA. And so you may get it with a little motion, and then it still turns out to be some type of side pick and roll or middle pick and roll. And so I know it's a little bit different in Euro basketball because sometimes the sizes, you guys do switching. Um, you know, we at our level, at the NBA level, switching pick and rolls really for us is an advantage. We want our opponent to switch a pick and roll because we have big guys, bigger guys who we can really skip the ball to and then try to post up and put the guards at a disadvantage. I think the guards are a little bit smaller in the NBA for the most part, the point guards. And so coaches don't like to switch small on big. Um, and you can get away with it sometimes because the sizes are a little bit about the same. There's not a big difference in regards to the bigs and the guards sometimes in Euro basketball. But I just want to, again, just go over some ideals and tell you a little bit about how we like to try to defend certain type of pick and rolls. And so at our level, it ain't so much just the pick and rolls, it's who involved with the pick and rolls. And there's a different, a lot of different types of pick and roll. There's a Ricky Rubio, there's Chris, when you talk about this, Stephen Curry. And so from a coach standpoint, you go into those games thinking of how to scheme differently than you would um, in regards to based on who's involved with the pick and roll. So first you, you evaluate who are the two offensive players involved? Who's the point guard and who's the big man? Is he a five? Is he a four? Is he, let's say for the sake of argument, is he Stephon Curry, excuse me, uh, Curry in Golden State and also Bogut in Golden State? Those two guys involved in a pick and roll, which I will cover, a lot of times teams will either trap them because they want to get the ball out of Curry hand and they want to make sure that they don't give him anything easy in regards to a jumper behind the screen. So the, the ball, the guy who's defending Curry would probably go over the top and the five man would trap him to encourage a pass to Bogut, who obviously is a good passer, but he's not a good shooter. He's not going to look to shoot the ball. And so you would put your defense in a position where then it would rotate and try to uh, cover that way. And then you have a situation which is the most difficult situation to cover. If you have a great shooter in a pick and roll, let's say for the sake of argument, a Kevin Love or a Dirk, and then you have a great shooter, a great point guard. So that, that would put a lot of pressure on you in regards to not only the two guys that's involved with the pick and roll, but the other three guys who's on the floor and we're going to talk about that because that's just as important as it is just the two guys involved with the pick and roll. The other three guys behind those two guys have to really be off their man and what we like to say, shrink the floor, shrink the court, and really be in great help position to try to make sure that that next pass that that ball handler makes is not a penetrating pass, not one to right to the rim, but more on the outskirts or on the perimeter where your defenders who have shrunk the floor can then close out to the shooters, all right? So uh, I'm just going to walk through just a couple of the main defensive schemes that we use at the NBA level, probably three or four from the top, and then probably use one or two from the side. Just a couple things. Again, middle pick and rolls, just some different things, some terminology. The first one I'm going to cover we call flat flat and over flat and over all right so you have the ball here you stay there so the reason we would 
we would use this defensive coverage, flat and over, okay? We have a big guy, let's say uh, a Howard, um, Tim Duncan, you know, he's not, he's not really that mobile, right? He's not that mobile, but you have a great point guard that can shoot it pretty good. So the whole premise behind flat and over is come set the screen. Okay, stay there. Um, give me a five-man, coach. Five-man. So the term when we use flat, you stay, stay at the screen. Flat, flat's going to be, no, set the screen like, yeah. Flat would be telling the five-man he's going to be flat to the screener. He's flat. Over is telling the guard you're going to fight over the screen. I personally, this is the way I played, I personally like being physical and fighting over screens. I don't like to become disconnected with point guards, especially ones that's very uh, good in scoring. So I really like to, and you have to be careful because the rules have changed. You can't quite be as physical as you once could back in the day. But once you hear, once you hear the bigs, and this is another very important uh, point that I have not mentioned, the most important thing in pick and roll coverage is communication. Communication, right? So the reason I talk about that, I'm the point guard. I'm in the stance. I don't know what's behind me. That big guy's got to be telling me right away, screen, screen, and he's got to be giving me more than just screen. He's got to give me direction. So one of the things we used last year as direction to try to simplify it and make it really easy for guards um, in regards to Peck and Kevin Love, we use weak and strong was the terminology we use. So weak, and we all base this off of the ball handler for there be no confusion. Weak is the ball handler's weak hand. Strong is the ball handler's right hand. So we didn't say left or right, we said weak or strong. So he would tell you which way the, string, the screen was coming. So if he said strong, the screen would be coming to the ball handler's right hand. And right away, if we're in the fl if we're, our defensive coverage is uh, flat, uh, over and flat, I'm over, I'm over, I'm into the, and I'm over, he's lending support, he's lending to support, dribble, until I say, no, no, flat is, flat is just, flat is just flat. So the key is, once I'm the defender, once I get over and I'm back in front, I tell the big, get back, get back. He goes back, all right? We've done our job in regards to trying to make sure that the ball handler doesn't get an advantage. One of the most important things, going to ball just a minute. When you talk about defending a pick and roll, and you're talking about how effective you will be in a pick and roll situation, we always talk about in terminology is you have to make this ball handler feel like he's going uphill, not downhill. So uphill would be He's, t he's moving away from the rim, right? Downhill for us, so to screen, is if he's turning and he's coming and attacking. This is downhill. You never, you, you never want a pick and roll situation for that guard to be able to turn the corner and get by two defenders. Very important. At the point of impact with the screener and the ball handler, these two guys take the ball. The ball, the guy is guarding the ball, and the guy is defending the screener. We have to do a great job of defending this ball handler till he makes the dribble out. All right, that simplifies everything. When when you allow a guard consistently to break you down and get in the gaps. That's what causes breakdowns. Teammates have to come help. They're either going to drop it off to the alley-oop or throw it to the corner for a shot. 
for a wide open shooter in the corner. All right? Understand that? Flat, we call it flat, uh, over and flat. <clears throat> so we're telling, the, we're telling the guard he's got to get over, and then we're telling the big what he has to do. He has to be in a flat position to help and support. All right? All right, let's get to defenders and just walk through that a little bit just to see what they're like. Now let's talk about the responsibility of the other three guys that's involved. Because in our game, it's just not the two guys involved with the pick and roll that helps to be in position and help to try to lend support. It's the other three guys as well. All right? So you'll be here. So as it works out, wing guys, we want you guys, we always foot in the paint to be helped. So we shrink the floor here. Obviously, 2.9, you can be pro lane, but we would prefer you go one foot in the paint and just two nine it as best you can. He's helping. Four man. Ideally, we want him to kind of sit on the high side of this other big if you're on that big, because the four man is, the other big is right there supporting, and we don't want him a duck in opportunity. So you're helping here with the big, but realizing that you may have to close out. Deep corner, deep state corner, spacing, again, spacing. And he's here. If he happens to turn the corner, let's say you, right? And there's some type of breakdown. Let's say there's a breakdown. Come. Again, everybody's philosophy is different. One of the things our philosophy was in Minnesota, Rick Adelman, and I believe in it too, we never help on strong corner penetration. So, otherwise, what I'm saying is, if I'm guarding a strong corner, and a lot of times most teams put their best shooters on this strong side, if I'm the defender here, I'm off early to stunt support, but then I gotta go, my responsibility really is the guy in the corner. I do not wanna help, because if I help, Swing, and there's no rotation to a great shooter in that corner. We never want to give up strong corner threes. We always teach like, stunt, close back out, and then if he does get to the rim, we got X4, you got to jam, and then he's got to come back to support for that. All right, any questions on that? All right, let's go through that a couple times and just – Run through it like two or three times and be aggressive. White team, I want you to be aggressive. Black team, again, we haven't covered exactly what this four man's gonna do for now, but let's just go over a couple of situations. So he's gonna screen. Let's say he screened and he rolls down, all right? If he rolls, you should still be able to go with him. As, you, as you're coming off and you're helping, if he rolls, Roll, you're still here, you could be here. This four man, we talk about communication. We want this four man off what we call bump or tag this five man. We want to give this five man an opportunity to screen and then roll free right down the middle of the lane without getting him some type of bump or tag. So you gotta slow him up. So as he's rolling, four man's gonna have to hold him up, right? And then once he tells him to get back in front, let's say you get back in front, the guard. No, the guard, get back in front. You got to run to the rim. You pick up. We bump to there, and then we bump to here. Everybody matched up, okay? Clear on that? Let's run that a couple of times. Okay? Just dribble it over for him. Work your way. Go to the elbow and then come up and set a middle pick and roll, all right? Flat and over. Get back, get back, get back! Stop. Okay, one of the key things we talked about, what did we say? One of the things we don't want that guard to do. We don't want him to be going downhill, so big guy, you got to stay. Give him the ball. He turned the corner, and you let him keep going. He just, no, we don't want this. We got to make him veer sideways. 
he's got to go uphill, as we talked about. So the first play, you got to be in a position where you make him go, yeah, this way, and then you get back. But you got to hustle to get back in front. You got to work. The guards got to work in this situation. You should be able to be able to be physical once you hear the screen and really ride over the screen and get back in front. And that big, at that point, he's just supporting. He's just supporting, making sure that guard doesn't turn the corner. He gets back in front. You turn and get to the rim. All right, let's try that again. Ah, he can't get bumped. Come back up top. Throw it back up top. Bring it back here. Bring it back here. Good. Okay. The back up top. Again, this is all personnel driven. This guard's got you got to work harder. You can't let you, you can't get bumped. Come. You hear a screen. You got to boom. You got to fight over it. All right. You got to get what we call you got to get skinny and get through the screen. So I'm guarding you. Are you telling me the screen coming? Who's telling me? Who's talking to me? Who's on D? Who's on D? Okay. So you got to be talking to me. Okay. Screen. And you got to say it loud. Loud. Okay. He's coming. I got to fight to get, I got to get over this. You can't get hit. If you get hit, it's done. You're going to leave this, your teammate in a bad position. So you got to recognize what we like to say, there may be separation here, then you got to close the gap before the screen comes. So I'm guarding him. I'm off. I hear the screen. Boom, I'm into him. And I'm riding him over. Whenever you allow, whenever you allow this space, and you get bumped, it's over. Then you have to go into a whole new different type of coverage. And that, you know, you will get into a different coverage, but you have to know firsthand and, and how we want to try to defend this by being over and flat. You got to work to get over and really work hard, okay? We'll do it a couple other times. We'll go to see if we have any questions about that type of coverage, and then we'll move to a different type of middle pick and roll coverage, okay? Dribble it over. Talk, talk, I wanna hear talk. Get up, get up. Good, get back in front. Bring it back up top, bring it back up top. Swing it back up top, swing it back up top. Bring it, hey, we bring it over here, over here. Bring it again. Get it to him. Good, good. So footwork, something you have to learn, you have to teach when it comes to your guards. Ball back up front. As this screen is coming, this lead foot, you still, you, you kind of open up like this, you still get bumped, right? This leg, that last screen, and this leg's got to go here, boom, you got to get over. You got to get over this leg. If you open up, Anyway, and expose your show, you're gonna get knocked off, boom, and you're gonna be trailing the whole time. So footwork, you gotta get into them, see it? Get over. Once you get over, use your butt, get through the screen, slide through it to get back in front. Okay, let's try that one more time, and then we'll go to a, another coverage. Get it over. Swing it back, swing it back, swing it back up top. Get that leg over. Okay. All right. One of the biggest things and one of the most difficult things it's the big man here, and he's got to work, but he's got to stay closer to the screen. The second screen happened. You turned, you screened it this way. It was this way. He came this way. All of a sudden now, the screen happened. 
The big guy's way back here. You gotta be up close. You gotta be connected to still try to make him dribble to the sideline. Allow your teammate to get in front, and then you gotta turn and get back. All right? Probably say 85% of the teams in the NBA use this coverage in regards to middle pick and roll. And it's called weak. It's called weak. And so, again, it's all personnel driven, but it's also, if you have a player that's a very strong right hand driver, you want to make sure that he's always going left. So the same positions, again, spacing is always going to be very important. Let's have the five man there. Okay, and so when we say weak, you're going to come around to this side and set the screen. We're talking about sending that offensive player to his weak hand or going to his left every time. It doesn't matter. So teams are getting very smart and trying to put wrinkles and trying to put different spins on it. But in regards to our schemes and how we want to try to cover it, once we're in a week, we stay in a week. And now let's we change it. So, you know, teams are really good at coming up and maybe setting it flat. They may try to set it flat. They may try to last minute flip it. And it doesn't matter. Again, communi communication is the most important thing. So whoever this big is, as he's coming up, he's got to be saying, weak, weak, weak. So this guard, this guard again, you got to have a physically man you got to have a physicality to you when you think about playing the point guard position. Because once you hear weak, you got to get up and make him go to his left. If you stay back and he cross you or he spins and comes off and comes around, it's going to kill your defense behind the way you have it set up to try to defend this. So weak is called, I'm weak in it. It's the same action in regards to the big. We want this big to be up and at least stay contact, stay contact with this screener. Same principle, we want to make sure he try to dribble to the sideline. This player here, you gotta do your best to go and get through as quickly as you can and you stay, stay and weak, you stay, the big stays until he gets rid of the ball. Once the ball is passed, I say you pass it. He always runs to the rim. No, no. Let's say you had, go back, go back, go back, go back. You had popped. You popped here. Right? And then at this point, boom, you come, you stunt. You can stunt. If this is a non-shooter, a five man is a non-shooter. You stunt, and then you get back to your five man. We're going to cover if it's a shooter, but if it's a non-shooter, we're going to get good support. Go corner, space. Go corner. This guy's got a lot of space he's got to run because he's got to stunt and buy time for the five men to get back, and then he's got to close out to the shooter up top. All right? Let's walk through it one more time. Okay? What are you going to call? Weak. Weak. Okay? And once you hear weak, you must make him go left, okay? Walk through it, walk through it. Set the screen. Weak, okay? Get into him. Get into him, get physical, go. Go dribble, dribble, stay. Tell him to get back. Stunt, stunt, and then you get back in front. Support, you guys are always in position to support if he happens to come, but you are not leaving. You gotta get, you gotta make sure you stay connected to him. All right? You got to be up and be in a position to help. If there's any type of, obviously with the Jordan for the Clippers, DeAndre, if there's disconnect here like this, he catches it, Blake Griffin catches it, he's just going to throw a lob. That's why you got to be sitting on his legs. You got to sit on his legs, and then if the ball is skipped there, let's say you throw it, then you can close out really hard to try to make him put the ball on the floor. All right? So let's go through that one time. Again, this is called weak, weak. Everybody's got to be off, help, ready to be, support. Okay. Start, get back. 
Good. Good, but you can't go too. Yeah, but you got to see this. See ball and man, right? You got to see ball and man. Ball catch, you got to stunt and then get back. All right? Let's run that again. Take it and dribble it over. Take it over half and dribble into it. Get back. Close out hard, hard. Run it again. Dribble it up. Run it again. Weak. Okay, you made him make a tough decision, but ideally, that's what we want. All right, he had to make a very tough play at the rim with two players on him, but ideally, again, it's tough in today's game to try to make this guard. If the guard doesn't do a good job of getting into him and, and veering him and the big is not up there to make that first dribble or two go sideline, he's going to turn the corner. All right, we get stunt and we go back and then you, you plug in if he stays. You got to on that, okay? Go through that one more time. Good, good, good. Let's just talk about um, week again in, in regards to where the screen happens. One of the important things when you talk about guarding the pick and roll, you talk about spacing, and you don't want your defense to get too spread out. So it's a read thing. If this screen happens to get too high, right, let's say he's way up here by the half court line and the screen happens, it's a feel. If it gets that high, you can go under probably, right? We don't want our defense to get so stretched out. And it's a smart thing as a guard. You got to understand where he's at. If he gets down here closer, you definitely have to get into him and be physical. But you should know where you're at on the floor. If you're this far out and you hear, and you hear it coming, you just have to go under. And then you still got to be there. That big, from a teaching standpoint, when you call weak, you got to stay here. Let's say you go that side. Let's say you try to screen. It doesn't matter where that big goes. You call weak, and you got to be here. The guard is expecting you to be there. And so you got to be on this side. If he calls weak and you go on this side, he's on that side, what's this guard going to do? It's a straight line drive. And that big has failed his responsibility of communicating to the guard on what type of defensive scheme we're in and pick and roll coverage. He's got to be there no matter what. And like I said, NBA teams, they, they, they try to put little wrinkles in that to try to Mess up your defensive schemes, and you have to be true and dedicated and have communications regarding that, for you won't have any breakdowns consistently. All right? Let's bring it back. Let's try it one more time. Okay. Get it back. Run again. Run again. Stay there, stay there, get in front of him. Good, good. Again, you have to understand in regards to your bigs and what he can do and how mobile he is. Uh, you don't try to ask somebody to do something they can't do. So when you think about a big and what they can do and their ability to move, um, Chicago's probably got the best two in Noah and Paul Gasol in regards to being long and being able to get up and get down and get ready to attack. You got to get that big in a position and get him comfortable to having to maybe have to guard that guard for one or two dribbles till the other guard recovers. But you can't be standing up straight and expect to try to guard a guard with a ball. He's going to blow by you. But if you're down and you're wide, you got a better chance of trying to control him for the one or two dribbles you have to until the guard gets back in front, and then you can release and go back to your big. All right? All right, so we're going to – I don't know if – I didn't see it yesterday, but um, something that happens a lot in the NBA, I didn't see it when I watched the games yesterday. What teams are doing now against the weak action is they're re-screening. 
right? That's not something that happened, at least in the games I watched yesterday. But in the NBA, a lot of times when teams get weak, they have the big re-screen. So we're going to walk through that and then just show you what happens. Weak action screen. Weak. Okay, you go two hard dribbles that way. Two hard dribbles. Two hard dribbles. You turn and you come back. Okay? That happens. That's kind of a counter, and they would come back to this. Okay? Try to catch, try to go a little bit deeper. Don't set the screen a little bit deeper. Okay? Go closer. Okay. Run it. Just to walk through. Weak, okay? Two hard dribbles. One, two, and come right into another screen. Okay? So a lot of teams are using that as a counter. But what we try to do is we still don't try to break from the scheme that we're in. And so when this happens, I'm going to be you just for a minute. Come on, run the screen. Weak, I'm in weak. Come back, I'm still in weak. You stay, where you going? You stay. We don't want, we don't want him to come back off. We don't allow him to come back off that screen if we're in weak. So we're staying here. Right? We're staying here and doing our good job and then until I get back in front. Because what happens again, like anything, once this guard, once you get it and you come off, then you, you got the whole floor open to you. Uh, so we want to try to make sure that once we call weak, we're keeping that ball on one side and we're really, what we're doing is we're shrinking the basketball court from the opponent in regards offensively. We're taking him now. Come. He's got the ball. I'm a defender. So we got one, two, three, almost four defenders versus really three defenders. So we're outnumbering him from that. We want to make this guy make a long pass. Right? Or make another dribble and then make a pass away from the basket. Far away. We don't want any penetrating passes. We don't want any passes in the lane. We don't want any passes in the post. Even passes forward, say you kick it ahead. That's not true. You just close out. That's fine. We did, we did our job in that responsibility. We're taking the ball out of the point guard hands, who is a great decision maker, a Chris Paul guy who really sets the tone and set the table for everybody else offensively to try to give it to another somebody else on the floor to try to make a play. All right? So let's do that one time. Go off. So, just a minute. And these guards are getting really good. They try to sell it. They get one hard, two hard dribbles, and they either spin back or they cross back to try to come back. So you got to stay on this high side, and you got to stay there. All right, and then you gotta be in a good help position. All right, let's run it. Stay up there, stay up there, good. Close out, close out. Good, 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 good. That's the pass we want to make happen. That's the pass we want. We want him to be in a stress situation, trying to make a long pass, which is the longest pass away from the rim and allowing our defense to close out to that shooter. All right? Any questions about that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, your big, your, the, the big has failed you. But yeah, let's talk about it. Come set the screen. You t I'll take the ball. So you're talking about if the guard comes here and he splits, right? Okay. This guy's done a poor job, right? Because if I'm guarding, if I'm guarding again, if I'm guarding, if I should be able to get over this, right? Let's say I don't. Let's say I get bumped. I get bumped somehow, all right? This big, again, you got to stay connected as best you can. You got to drive him that way. You can't let them lead you and then split you. It happens. And the, I mean, it's just like anything. There's a breakdown. And so at that point, there's a scramble. Everybody scramble. So when the breakdown happens, let's talk about it. Come. He breaks down. You, you, didn't, you didn't do that. You're not that. So now what happens? He's got to come. 
right? He's got to try to pick, and everybody else has got to, at that point, we're in scramble mode. You guys got to talk. You got to go. You got to try to get to the rim. We got to try to make him make another pass. Boom. And then we cover. We cover. Then he got to go down here. He's got to go back. And then you got to go back. It's a scramble mode at that. It's really a scramble mode in regards to communicating again. And those are drills that we run. Like we run a four on four shell drill and we make it a pick and roll and we make it a breakdown. We make it that there is a split and we put the pressure on the other three guys to try to cover for their teammate for one or two seconds or make them make that next pass. And still, our same philosophy stands true. We never want this ball handler to come out and make a penetrating pass to the rim. We still want him to make a pass there or a pass there to give us a better chance to recover. Whenever there's any type of, and he's in here and he comes up and he, let's say, we don't want any type of penetrating pass to the rim on that. Okay? Question up top. Yes. The strong, yep. Put him in the paint, yeah. Yes. Yes. He he's defending it there. He's initially in, initially we're talking about shrinking shrinking the court and then his ability to react when the ball is in the air is critical. If he comes off and he throws it here, I should be able to close out to him quick enough. We initially, we want to try to stop any type of dribble penetration. So we're shrinking the court to make the driving lanes look small. And if we're way over, throw the ball there. If I'm guarding this guy and he turns the corner and he goes, the gap, he goes there, what good am I? Initially, I'm here to help knowing that I'm stunting, stunting, and then closing once the ball is passed. We, we talk a lot about reacting when the ball is in the air. So when the pass is made, I should be able to close out to contest this shot quick enough. I should be able to see that, that I know strong side, again, my rule strong side, strong side shooter, I don't help on penetration. I stunt. The guys behind me are helping really at the rim, hopefully. And the guard is doing a good job. We like to say, you can't quit on the play. Even if you get picked, you're dribbling. I still got to keep playing for if he does pull up, I can have back contest, backside contest on a jump shooter. So if you shoot it, I'm backside contesting as best I can. If I'm leaning on the screen, I'm not doing anybody any good. He's going to be able to have a gap to shoot it, and you can't be, you got to go there. You got to stump, but you got to close out there. Does that help? In a, yes. Good question. Great question. So let's talk about it. So the four men, you're going to set the screen. We're going to weak. You up, you up. You're gonna roll. This is a this is a double side. So we twi we tag it twice. So he's here. He tags. He slows him up. Then he passes him off to the to the big, to the other four, and he got to close. So we we try to make sure that when the roll guy is on the side that there's two defenders is what we call the weak side eye. There's a perimeter here and then there's a, a big behind you. 
you got a tag bump however you want to use terminology we we know we always said bump just so we can have a physical mindset not a tag but sometimes we talked about body check you got to be careful because you can't really body check as much as you can stay here stop them hit them and then be ready to close out you just want to stop his momentum initially and also if this five man let's say Marcus all is a great passer you want to make sure that you don't really let him get a quick pocket pass for he can do something damage and make a quick another pass either so you want to be as the ball is gone away dribble the ball this weak side guy is at the nail again we talk about it if the ball is passed from there all the way there he should be able to close out to that guy right so we're here in position to help a, a quick tag Roll. Who said you roll? We don't want this. We don't want this guard. You're rolling. You're offensive player. When he rolls, we don't want this guard. Roll to the basket. Roll to the basket like going to the basket. We don't want this guard to stay all the way down here. We just want him to come, set the screen, and roll. Set the screen and roll to the basket. Bump, and then pass him off and get back to your spot. And the four man will pick him up, and then the five will get back to him. Okay. It's more difficult, especially in our league, when it's just a single side. Because if the pass happens at the same time that the tag happens, it's going to be more difficult for that guard to get to recover all the way out to that shooter, especially with no big back there. But most of the time, that last big is at the rim. He should still see another big come and be able to pick him up. You don't. You see this in some situations, but not a lot, but we're going to cover it anyway. It's just, uh, it's red. Again, the terminology is based on what you use for a terminology, but our red was a trap. Straight out trap, aggressive. When we trap it, we want to be aggressive. We want to make sure we have active hands and we're physical with the ball handler and we stay in the trap until the ball is passed out. All right, so we're going we're gonna to walk through that. Bring it here. Going to your right. So we're going to say red. Screen happens. S screen, walk into the screen. Let's move it close. Let's move it closer down. Let's make sure we get a little too. Let's get in the offensive threat. So red is a trap. Again, it's probably, it's our most aggressive type of defense against the middle pick and roll. And again, it's all personnel driven. You got to see and evaluate who your opponent is. You would never run this against a non-shooting point guard. You run it against someone like a Chris Paul, a Curry, someone who you want to get the ball out their hands, and that five man is not a great shooter. He's a roll guy, or he may even be a pop guy, but he's still not going to hurt you in regards to being able to catch it and shoot it. All right, so the screen happens. Red. No, no, no. Red. We changed. Red. Okay. Get back. Red. You're trapping. You're trapping. So how do you say trap? Trap. Trap. Yeah. And you're aggressive. So both the big and the one, you stay until he gets rid of the ball. And you got to be active in hand. So the ideal thing we teach is that point guard. Give me the ball. Touch the screen. When it happens, guard, this point guard can't make a straight line drive, a straight line pass somewhere. It's got to be ah, way over high. It's got to be a lot of air under the ball in order to give our defense time to rotate or stunt. We get into trouble when it happens, then we're screwed. It becomes very difficult then, because then he's going to make a play, he's going to roll, and we're going to be outnumbered. So this, this big and this guard has got to do a really good job, stay corner. And when it happens, he's got to trap Ugh. and stay, right, until it happens. You don't go, no, no, no. You don't leave until the ball is passed. So once it's passed, then you close out and you run. 
And when this happens, again, we emphasize it's on these other three guys too to communicate. So when this is happening, X4 is telling the five man, get to your own or, or I'm gonna take him and you get to the rim. And most likely, again, strong side, if the ball's in the strong side area, you're gonna start and get back. You're gonna have to hold, well, oh, he's on that side. You'll be strong side, you'll be down, bumping, and you're gonna have to close out really quick. And most likely, boom, you, you, you wait until he gets back, or you may have to run and pick up here, most likely, because he's already on the ball. So you would run here to the basket, and when you run to the basket, then he would rec recover out to the shooter in that, okay? Let's run that a couple times. Red is the call, red. I don't want it to be, let's not set the screen so hot anymore. Let's get it down here closer to an offensive threat. If we can kind of have a better chance of seeing what happens, all right? Okay, all right, so work your way down. Take it out here, but work your way down to the lower area. Okay, here we go. Wait, wait, wait. Drop it, drop it. Good, run that again. So when the ball, the ball was passed to the wing, right? So if he goes here, you're gonna have to step, you're gonna have to get in the, you're gonna have to get in the paint where you were still out there. So what happened was you were, you were like in no man's land. You were here, he was here, right? You're gonna have to go with him. You gotta stay here, you gotta go with him when he goes. You gotta pick up here, right? You gotta be in this position. And again, once this happens, because you, then you passed it there, right? Okay, then you gotta run, yep. And then you, he's gotta pick him up and you gotta close out to there. Most likely, you, you would run to the rim. So you would be down here. You would be in here holding until you got all the way back. And then once he got back, he would bump you out to the shooter. But if you see somebody go behind you like that, you gotta go with him. You can't stay here in between, right? Again, our philosophy has always been when the ball's away from you, the furthest guy, you still got to be in here to make sure they make that pass. That is the one pass we want to leave open. We don't want to leave a pass here and then leave a, another offensive player here. All right, let's run that again. That was a good cut. Run this here. Run it again. Red, get it down. Get it down. Wait, 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 wait. High hands. Good, good, get back, get back, good, good. Bring it back up top, bring it back up top. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Get up, get up, get up, scramble. Good, good, good. So again, the red is the most aggressive defenses and we really work on trapping the ball and making that guard, that ball handler make a quick decision and a decision that will really help our defense. All passes have to have a lot of air on them, but we can rotate or close out depending on where that, where that first pass is going. All right? Are there any questions about that so far? Any questions about that? All right? Okay, one thing we haven't covered yet. Yes. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that. You're talking about roll and replace. So we're gonna have uh, a four man down there, four man and a five. So we're gonna walk through it just to make sure we clear. So what happens is, it happens, screen. And when it's happened, 
You're rolling right away. All the way to the rim. Four man. Four man, you're coming up. You're rolling up. You're rolling up for a shot. You're rolling up wide. Where are you going? You first big. You got to pick up the big. You're stuck with two guys here. All right? So dribble it over that way. Dribble it over that way. All right? Again, if we can, we don't want to get stretched too far out. But let's say we're here. All right? You got to have active hands. He's got to make a wide pass. All right? So this is going to be a tough one. This is going to be a really tough one now. All right? Because this is a great shooter. Right? This is a great shooter. So we've stuck one defender, two good offensive players. So as this happens, he's going to, last guy on the bottom is going to start cheating a little bit. You still, after you get out, you're going to be running to the rim. You're going to close out to him, and then he's going to be in full rotation. He's going to go from here all the way out to there. So we're going to walk through and just show you guys one more time. Let's do it again. Start down. This is probably the toughest cover. Walk through it, Jeff. Supposed to pass it. And again, everything we do is based on reacting when the ball is in the air. So we don't want you to leave too soon. Put the ball there. Right? You got to, this big has got to really work to get back to the rim. It does his best job to get to the rim. And when the ball is passed, then you got to close out. And again, if this is a three-point shooter, we talk about chasing him off the three-point line. So we don't care if he pump fakes and we close out hard and he takes one dribble and pull up. That's okay. You can't. All right? We don't want a three-point shooter to just stay here and just be measured and shoot it. All right? We want to be aggressive, come out, contest, and make him put it on the floor because the stats show that when you make a catch-and-shoot guy put it on the floor, his percentage goes down. And if you let him just straight catch and shoot, his percentage is going to stay up high. All right? So we're going to run that a couple times and see how our defense react. All right? Again, get it a little bit low. Get it about here. All right? Okay? Good job. Here we go. Good, good, good. Get back, get back. Good. Good. And we'll live with that. We'll live with that type of shot. It's a tough shot, off the dribble, fall away, and it's contested. You come up, five goes down. So same action, all right? Again, trap happens. Trap, trap. You pop, all right? This point, you got to be ready. You, where you going? And then again, again, based on this, still the five man comes, he may have to close out. And then we'd be in a tough situation. We didn't just move that opposite guard to the big. Most likely, we would never run that kind of coverage. We don't want our five men to ever run out and try to defend somebody. It just depends on the personnel. If, if it's that type of situation where we have a five that's not that mobile and a great shooter, we would not, we would not have him be in a situation where he has to rotate out to a shooter. It's just, it's, it's too much to ask of that five man. It's not fair to him. Okay, one other thing in the high pick and roll before we go to the side pick and roll, and this is called hedge, hedge and over, hedge and over. Okay, let's have, uh, let's have the four man, five man's down. Give me the ball for just a minute. So head, some people call it a hard show, uh, but we call it hedging over. So when the screen happens, this play, the defender is up. His side, so his chest is pointing towards the side. And again, we talk about it. We emphasize this ball handler, we want him to go uphill, veer out, and then the guard will be able to go over the screener and under his man. Hedge and over, black and over, however you want to call it. I'm going to be the defender just for a minute. Offensive player, you step off for just a minute. You stay. So hedge, jump. So we, we talk about hedging like this. Shoulders, everything, chest is facing the sideline. That's a hedge. 
for when that happens, the ball handler has to go that way. I'm going over, stay here, set the screen. I'm going over the screen, under, no, no, you've done your job. You've done your job. Once she veers out, you've done your job. Then I'm coming back under to catch. Okay, hedging over. And then if this is a four man, sometimes it's a four man, and that's why we use this when it's a four man and he's a great shooter. Once we hedge, I'm going to be a hedger for just a minute. Go there. Once I hedge, come off. We teach hedge, and you recover with your arms back towards the four man. For if they try to make a pass, you may get a deflection. You're still stunting, knowing that you're then getting back, getting back, and then I'm just recovering to my guy. All right? So let's run that. Okay, so again, this big guy, screen happens, come off, boom, and then you close him back. Again, this is one of the ways that we try not to get into a lot of rotation. If it's a four man, the question was raised early, if that five man is not a good rotation guy, how do you try to cover a four man involved with the pick and roll? And that's one of the ways we would cover it. Good heads, good strong heads by the four man to the point where you're making that guard veer out, you're going under, and then you're able to get back to your man with a little help, and then you get back and recover. Okay? Let's have you, uh, when you come off, try to throw it to the four man. Four man make a play. Shoot it or make a play. Get, get the ball down deeper. Start down, start down. Okay. Hedge, hedge. Good, good, get over. Good, 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 good. Great rotation. That's what he's there for. That's what he's supposed to do. That's a great read by him. All right? All the great weak side defenders always cheat. They're off. And when you talk about Carl Leonard, any of these guys are long and athletic. They're off initially. They can see the play, and they still can have vision on the man in the corner. He was able, because there was a great double team, get to the double team. Right? We had high hands. They came. He threw it up. He reacted. He made a play on the ball while the ball was in the air, which is great. All right? Let's run that one more time. Get off. Good, good, good. Get there. Stop. Get back now. Get back. Get back. Good. Okay, one thing now, he has to be smart. Let's put the ball here. Once the ball here, you can't stay here. You got to get back. So it's, when I say stunt, boom, you stun and you getting back. Because what ends up happening is if you stay too long, the pass is made, the shot's up. Great shooters aren't going to pump fake and try to make one dribble and make that pass. This guy's going to lock, it's, it's going to be gone. And that's why we want to make sure we stunt, we buy time. We like to say buy time for our teammate. One, two, buy time, and then we close back out to the great shooter. And we've, by that time, he should be squared up with his man and ready to play, and everybody should be in position. All right, let's run that one more time. Get back, get back, good, good. Stunt, get back, good. Good again. Good, good defense, good defense, great job. That's the way you want to play in the pick and roll situations. You want to put pressure on them and make them make a play and make sure there's not anything easy for them to do. That's too far. Okay, let me try to make sure I understand what you're saying. Let's, I'm on a guard. Come set the screen, defender. So you say you want him to go under and bump. You could. I don't, I don't know what good is going to do. What's going to end up happening is you go up, you're going to bump. You're going to be stuck low. You bump and he bumps you too long. Who's, gonna, who's got the ball? I know, but he's going to turn the corner. So the angles, you talk about angles. Go there. Come back. He's far away, but I'm bumping. Go. And then I'm going to have to come back and get him. And part of the, the reason of us trying to see, do this is there's a great 
point guard who's a great shooter, then there's a great four man. And so you don't want to give him any type of space. So that's, that's the purpose of that. You just don't want to allow, again, realistically, if there's any type of space and this is a great shooter, a Curry or any type of point guard that can shoot it from three, you're going to be too far away. The shot's going to be gone. So in that, in that guard, when you go over and you should be able to do a better job, be able to close out and contest it. Again, this is, this is we do this when it happens to be uh, the one and the four happens to be very good shooters too. And you don't want to, you don't want to get in a situation where you, you stretch in the four man who's guarding the screener and he's popping and now it's too far of a run for him to get back. Right, you see what I'm saying here? And then, and then in the same case, you don't want the guard to be going under and allowing that guard space. So it, it's a way that you think you can cover, cover them both. Have the ball handler go uphill, have that guard have a chance to stay close enough to him, and then because you have the weak side help, and the big is doing a good job of running back with his arm active and up high, there they shouldn't be a direct pass again for him to catch it and shoot it and then he should be able to stunt and close back out, okay? On this defense, uh, if it's a quick wrist screen, a quick ball screen, wrist screen, you use the same defense, hedge and over second time, or you use something else? Well, sometimes, uh, that's a good question. Sometimes, is that it? Yeah, you defend. Yep. Hedge. Then there's a rescreen, the four man's got to come back. And sometimes, again, in a low clock situation, sometimes we may switch it, right? Just depends on a lot of times after, if there's some, been some motion before the pick and roll, and then there's been one screen, and then they will try to run a second screen, the shot clock is low, and then we'll probably just switch it at that point. If it's a situation where you know, if it happens really quick, you would try to try to, if you could, hedge it again, but it's very difficult to do. So hopefully by that time, when it, whenever anything fell for us and it's a low clock situation, for the most part, low clock situations, we like to switch it. All right? Any other questions? Okay. Another um, question? Pregunta. Thank you, coach. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you.